Hey guys, my name is Austin Gregory, and in this course, I am going to teach you how to set up a character creation scene where we're going to be able to customize characters that we can then use in our games. To do this, we're going to be using a free asset on the asset store called the Unity Multipurpose Avatar System, or UMA or UMA for short. This is going to allow us to customize lots of things about these avatars from uh, DNA, which is going to allow us to control facial, uh, facial features like the pointiness of the nose, the angle of the ears, the uh, sharpness of the jaw. We're going to be able to control the height and the, the muscle build, the, uh, the, the fat, the weight, uh, skin color, uh, foot size, all kinds of things like that. And there's a lot of details there that we're not going to uh, control ourselves. But once you understand how to manipulate the height of the character, you can manipulate any of those details. Once you understand how to manipulate uh, the weight of the character, you can manipulate any of those details as they're all done in the exact same way. Uma allows us to do this very easily. It also allows us to define a wardrobe for our characters and it handles uh, equipping and, and uh, managing that very easily for us. Now, for all of this, we're going to be using the built-in wardrobe recipes. It's going to allow us to get up and uh, going pretty fast using the clothes that they provide for us. Uh, but if you are an artist or if you uh, just like to learn this kind of stuff, you can definitely uh, build your own uh, based on the UMA model to allow you to add any kind of equipment or outfits or uh, clothing that you would like for your UMA. And it will work with the system that we're developing here as long as you build it in accordance with the UMA system itself. You'll be able to uh, stretch out the muscles and change the height and, and so on and your outfits will match and will conform to the models this uh, as i said it's free and it's very very powerful and we're not going to touch on a fraction of what it can do but we're going to use the stuff that we need to be able to create a simple little customizer like you see right here that i built it's a very simple tool and you, like these sliders here you could change any data you would like about the uh, avatar the character uh, I chose height muscle and weight for my example that's what we're going to be doing for this uh, the height just controls you know the height of the character there the muscle is separated into two parts you have upper muscle and lower muscle I've just combined them into one setting and the weight as well upper weight and lower weight we're changing the uh, the sex of the character male and female and we have a few hair presets that I added depending on the sex you'll get different hair options and then we have some skin color that may be a little alien but that was easier than trying to match actual human skin so we're changing the hair by changing uh, some of the slots on our Uma. And the slots are what you can see here with like these gloves, how they kind of conform to the hands of the character. Or if you had some shoes on or these pants, in fact, are a part of uh, the slot system and the shirt and this robe here. Um, there's a very complex system that's easy to use that allows you to, let's say you created this robe. You could say when this robe is equipped, hide the torso and hide the legs that kind of thing it's a very simple slot system that handles uh obscuring and showing uh, certain details based on the the settings that you give it so the first steps we'll have to do is download and import uma obviously we need the tool uh it's right off the asset store we're going to create a base Uma character, maybe throw on some uh, some clothes so they're not naked. And then we're going to set up a simple system to allow us to click on that character and rotate them kind of like you would get in a character creator if you're familiar with an MMO or uh, just any RPG where that has a character created you can rotate the character around in. And then in the next lesson, we're going to set up the UI to get started building our characters. So let's jump over to Unity here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create from the Unity Hub 1.3 here, I'm going to create a new Unity project and I'm going to call it Character Customizer. It's going to be a 3D template. I don't need analytics enabled for this because I don't care. And I'm going to click Create Project. So here we are in the default Unity layout 
If you want to get to this point, go up to layout and go to default. So we have the exact same setup here. And the first thing I want to do is go to the asset store. And when we connect here, I'm simply going to search for UMA or UMA, Unity Multipurpose Avatar. <laughs> It's going to be UMA and there's a bunch of options that pop up here, but these are not what we want for this. There's a bunch of tools on the asset store that are built and developed uh, to work specifically with UMA, this tool right here. Uh, there's a bunch of characters, there's a bunch of equipment and uh, models that you can get that work directly with UMA. And there's even uh, character controller integrations and all kinds of stuff because UMA is a very uh, big tool. It is the best tool really on the market for what we're trying to do. And it's free and open source, which we can't go wrong with that. So I'm just going to go here and I am going to just, if you don't have it downloaded, make sure you uh, download it and then import it just like that. Now it's going to ask us what we want to import from all of these uh, files and folders. We want everything in the UMA directory to be imported into our project. And this may take a while as there is a bunch of stuff that you are importing. Once we have UMA imported, uh, we want to keep it very simple, first of all, so we can just get started by having a character uh, that is controlled and owned by the UMA character system. So to do that, I'm just going to go over to scene here. And the first thing I want to do is I want to create a plane that our character is simply going to stand on. We need something to allow our player to stand in our game world. So we'll just have a plane here and I want to call it ground. And we'll just make it a bit larger, maybe uh, 10 on the X and Z there. And in the game view, uh, we just have a big white plane. So what I want to do now is I want to place a default base UMA character. So I'm going to go into the UMA folder and I am going to go to the getting started folder. This is where you can go whenever you just want to get a quick start. And that's exactly what we want to do. Uh, I need to drag out this UMA DCS prefab here. It's dynamic character system. It gives us all the libraries, all the things our UMA character is going to need to work. So we'll just drag this into our scene. Anytime you have an UMA character that you're working with, you're going to want this in your scene. And then I want to drag out this UMA dynamic character avatar prefab that allows us to actually build our character. So I'm just going to drag this into my scene. Now what we get here, first of all, I'm going to rotate this uh, zero on the Y. So we're facing the correct direction there. Uh, we have a placeholder model in our scene view but in our game view there's nothing there and that's fine that's because our characters are going to be built at runtime whenever we actually generate the character and the reason for that is there's a lot of data that has to be loaded in that can only be loaded in whenever we're actually running the game that's because if we make any customization changes say in our character creator uh, we want to make sure that that's loaded in whenever the game is loaded so that we don't even bother building the character before that point because all that data will be brought in at runtime so let's see what this looks like now if i were to run this if i look at my dynamic character avatar script which is on the character avatar that we created uh, we see that we have active race set to human male that's fine for now we'll leave that and we have a bunch of stuff here, right? This is a, just a crazy amount of stuff to look at. But we're not going to worry about most of it, especially for now. So if I just click play, what happens? I see a naked guy standing way out there. I can see his bum from here. Uh, so let's actually take and bring him back towards the camera. And in fact... Let's bring the camera and let's look at him from the uh, direction we want to see him from here. We'll just bring the camera a little closer. There he is. And there's our guy standing there. So he's naked. We don't want him to be standing out here and getting uh, too nippy. It looks cold out. So what I would like to do is if I were to go to my character avatar here, I see I have something called default wardrobe recipes. Now, the way UMA works, we talked about this a bit, but we are building wardrobe recipes that act as the clothing or the equipment that will be skinned onto our character. So the way we can do this is we have some built-in wardrobe recipes that we can simply drag and drop up here to see how it works by default. So to find these uh, wardrobe recipes, we're going to go up to content, I'm going to go down to UMA examples. 
And then I want to go on down here to human male because working with a guy. There's also a female version for this. And I'm going to go to wardrobe recipes. And we see all of these options in here. These are just recipes that come by default with Uma. And again, you can create your own. And there's a ton of uh, videos on how to create your own. It is a bit more in depth than this is going to be as we're just wanting to get a simple customizer in our game that you can then extend, right? So we're going to get the base in place here. It allows you to build your characters. And then when you want to go crazy and create your own, your clothing and your own equipment, uh, there's resources out there for you. But in this case, what I want to do is just give him some clothing. So I'm just going to drag uh, we have a robe here. I can just drag this robe, drop it on the wardrobe recipes drop box there. That's the hood. We can add the shoes and then we can add the actual robe itself. There we go. We have some clothing. Now you're seeing what's happening here is I'm just adding it to a list that is under default wardrobe recipes. If I don't want the male robe, I can just hit the X and take it off, right? Pretty simple stuff. I can also say, We'll just give him some underwear, maybe, just so he's covered up a bit there. Or maybe just give him some shorts. Take off that underwear. There we go. We have some shorts on him. And we also have a shirt here. These are just the built-in clothes. Uh, that you can actually do this at runtime. You can do this in our character creator that we're going to create. But we're just going to give them some default clothes so that they have... Uh, have some decency. So what I want to do now, notice when I stop playing the game, that goes away. And that's just because that's how Unity works. We all know that anything you do at runtime typically is not going to be saved. So what I want to do is just give him some shorts and a shirt. May not match, but that's fine. At least he's not naked. Now this is on the human male. We also have human male DCS, which is what we're going to be using. It's the human male dynamic character system. So if I select that, my wardrobe is still there because it's still human male. And you'll see male shorts works for human male and human male DCS. But if I were to change my active race, which is a weird name for the sex of the character, but it's because you can create races for everything. Maybe you want to have an orc race and you'll have a male and female orc. You maybe want to have a unicorn race. You can have a male and female unicorn. I'm not sure what that would be. Uh, but human female DCS... Now, it says human male and human male DCS wardrobe is still on her. But if we were to click play, we will see we see her standing far away again because we didn't we did all that in runtime and she's not wearing any clothes. So before we get up and close with her, what I want to do is for the female DCS, while these are already attached as the default wardrobe recipes, I want to add some clothes that work with a female. So I'll go to human female and I will go to recipes, wardrobe recipes, and I want human female. There's a girl version too, but we're going to go with this. Uh, let's give her some, we can put her in underwear, or maybe we'll just put her in a shirt and some pants. So now we have human female DCS and human male DCS clothes on. So depending on which race that we have selected, it will choose which one can uh, go on in that race. So we'll click play now as the female. And you'll see that she's wearing some clothes. Now, while we are here, let's drag this back closer to the camera. And we'll just rotate it around again. Now, we'll, we'll change this whenever we actually do our simple little movement system a couple lessons from now. But for now, we'll just get up and close with the camera so we can see what's going on. There she is. Looking good. She has no hair, though. Uh, we can give her some default hair. We have... Female hair one, two, and three that come with this. These work just the same as the clothing as they count as perhaps a hat. You would have a hat. You have a hat of hair. We'll give her the second option there. Now if I click play, we will see that she has some hair on. But if I were to change this over to a human male DCS, dynamic character system here, we will see that he's still just wearing whatever we gave him. He's ready to go to the beach, but he's bald. So uh, I don't mind him being bald, but what I would like to do is give him perhaps a beard of some sort and then we'll give him some hair, just like that. So now he's got a five o'clock shadow and well, he still has uh, very little hair. Let's give him, we'll give him, he'll, he'll be bald on top here. There we go. 
looks pretty good. And if we get in closer, we can see what's going on with this. Doing is at runtime, so it won't stick, but it's fine. There he is. Looking pretty good. So that is going to be our base UMA model. This is the clothing they're going to wear uh, by default. And then we're going to create an editor that allows us to change, you know, his muscle definition, his height, uh, his weight. Uh, maybe you want to change things about his face. All that information is available to us. And we're going to be doing that by adjusting DNA values. Look at all this stuff in here. This is the stuff you get by default with the default UMAs. If you're creating your own characters and your own rigs and you follow a similar uh, bone structure, uh, you'll be able to do the same stuff or create your own. Perhaps you have, you know, the unicorn. You want to control the length of the horn. I don't know what you'd want to do with that. Uh, but if you look in here, we can see we can make, uh, let's just do increase his arm length, you know, increase the arm width, make him really, really, really bulky. <laughs> Uh, we can change his ears, raise them up a bit, rotate them out, and increase the size of them. Uh, make his, let's see, make his head really small. <laughs> it's fun to play around with this stuff. Uh, he has a little, he has a big thick neck, and he's not very muscular, but he's bulky. And he has a little belly, and he's tall. <laughs> That's kind of the kind of stuff we can do in the editor, and it's all the same stuff. So if we were to edit this value right here, you would know how to edit any of the other values. So that's what we're going to do in the next lesson, guys. We're going to set up the UI so we can start interacting directly with the DNA that we have for our character. My name is Austin, and I will see you there.